Hello, BWHA38 here. Today I'm going to show you how to program a General Electric MVS series radio. If you're into radio programming at all, you know that typically that involves an older computer that will run DOS, a programming cable, the programming rib, the software, the radio, and uh, it's difficult in these days to locate all those items and especially the programming rib that goes along with the General Electric series. It's very difficult to find and it's expensive. What I have is an alternative to that somewhat. You still need the radio and the computer and the software, of course, and the cable. But uh, in doing a little research, I realized that the programming rib for General Electric was simply a serial to TTL converter. And once I realized that, uh, it was simply a matter of finding the serial to TTL converter in another form and adapting it to be able to be used in this uh, software programming. So what I did was I realized that a lot of the newer computers today don't even come with a 9-pin COM port anymore. And uh, they're usually not DOS-based computers either. What I have here is a small netbook running Windows XP Professional. It does not have a COM port, but instead I'm going to use a USB uh, UART converter to TTL, and the other end has the connector on it for the MVS radio. Incidentally, if you're interested in a quick fix to the cabling problem, you can get online to rfguys.com. They're in Canada, but they do an excellent job of building programming cables for a wide variety of manufacturers. Um, the cable that they make for the MVS looks like this one. Uh, the TTL conversion electronics are in the D sub connector inside of here. And of course, the other end has the 10 pin MVS connector. Um, you still need a computer that has the 9 pin COM port to be able to use this, but it's, it's simply plug and play. It's a real nice deal. RFGuys.com. I don't work for them or owe them anything. It's just one that I've found that's, it's nice. They get about $40 for this cable. And so, um, if it's, if it's quickness you want, go ahead and get on eBay and get one of those quickly. The cable I'm going to be using today is USB based. Um, what's good about that is uh, being USB based, it will get its power from the USB connector, the five volts it needs to operate. And um, um, the TTL conversion electronics are inside of this housing. And of course the other end is coupled with the MVS connector. There are a few things though that we have to do ahead of plugging this in and plugging it into the radio, and I'll get to that right now. The first thing we have to do is to download the Prolific 2303 driver for this cable. And uh, if you do a Google search for Prolific USB PL2303 driver, you're going to find that fairly easily. It's only about a 3 megabit megabyte file. And once you download it, it's simply a matter of installing that. It doesn't take very long for that to take place. There's one other thing that we need to do in the computer so that we can run the MVS programming software. The software wants the programming cable to be either COM1 or COM2. Um, typically when you install the, the 2303 driver, uh, if you have other COM ports already active, it's going to make it some number three and higher. Uh, 
five. I've had it as high as seven. And uh, the software just won't recognize that when it's set that way. So in order to make sure that the uh, cable is actually the COM1 or 2. We need to plug the cable in and go into the device manager on the computer and set it as that. At this point I've plugged the cable in. Uh, it, the computer recognized the cable and installed the software and I've gone into the device manager of this Windows machine and you'll notice that the prolific USB to serial COM is now set at COM3. This is the problem we need to fix. Simply right click on this and choose properties. Go into the port settings and choose advanced. In this dialog box we have the choice of ch changing the COM port number and we slide up to the top we can see that COM1 and COM2 are available. I'm going to go ahead and use COM1 and set this device for COM1. And then just close out the other dialog windows. At this point we're able to connect the other end of the cable to the radio and I've turned the radio off for this. I'm just going to turn the radio on its side and unplug the mic connector in the bottom of the radio and plug in my programming cable. The tab only goes one way, so look in there to see. It goes towards the back of the radio. Once we've started the MVS software, we can turn the radio power on. And I'm going to make sure that the software is set up for the correct COM port. To do that, I press F3 and then F1. And you'll notice that the COM port here is set to COM2. I need to change that by pressing the number 1 and then F1 to be sure. Once I've corrected the port setting in the software, I need to press F10 to go back to the main menu and then I'll press F6 to read the radio's contents. I need to give the file that we place in here a name and I'll just call this new and press F1 to begin. It will not take very long for the software to read the radio. It will verify it and then you're finished. At this point you have the file that you've wanted and now you can press F2 to go in and take a look at it. As I mentioned earlier, I'm using this VHF radio in the 2 meter band. The band split for the MVS stops at 150, that's the low end. You may put in frequencies lower than 150 megahertz, but to toggle through the software you need to press Control E. Holding the Control key down and pressing the E key will let you get through the software and move on down through to the, new, the different lines. Since this is a 16 channel radio I'll see eight frequencies on this page and I press the page down button to see the second eight frequencies. Once I've made all my frequency and PL changes in the software I need to toggle over uh, to the right somewhere so I press control E and I want to exit so I press F10 when you go to save a file you may notice that the directory you're saving in is in the C drive documents and settings user desktop MVS so on and so forth the uh, because this is an older piece of software it doesn't like the directory called documents and settings especially doesn't like the tilde that's thrown in there in the actual path so what I'm going to do is backspace out all of those things until I get back to the root directory which is C and then I'm going to press 
exit with save F1. Now I've got to understand that that directory is now on the root drive and not in any folder that I've placed onto my desktop earlier. I'm now ready to put this information back into the radio. I've made my changes, so what I want to do is press F5 to program. It asks me if I want to use the file called new. I do, so I go ahead and press F1. You'll notice that it says writing radio personality, and again, this doesn't take much time at all. And I get the happy beep at the end, letting me know that it has successfully been programmed. I hope this video has been helpful. If you've sat through the entire thing, I know you're as nuts about radio programming as I am. And you may be asking yourself, or asking me, why bother when I could just go out and buy a 2 meter rig with all these features already built in? Well, um, that's a good question. One reason is, is because Older commercial gear is readily available on the internet now, especially that um, public safety and business are trying to um, narrow band all of their gear. This radio is not narrow band capable. And so they might just think, well, we'll throw it out or we'll sell it on eBay or something like that. Well, they can be bought for uh, not very much money at all. And uh, for a little bit of money, you can pick one up on eBay and get your programming cable uh, the software is readily available on the internet, and you can have a pretty nice little 40-watt uh, backup 2-meter rig if you like. And this video was simply to show you how to program it using a USB to serial cable.